Hello everyone. Welcome back to some oxygen not included. Today I just want to do a video on how I handle my water needs. When I do a new game, a new map, uh, there's a few things I'll do first. Because normally when you do a new game, there's a bunch of clean water right by you. Right by where you spawn, your first base, your first little setup. And that's usually enough water for quite a while. So again, once I get that situated, my power, my oxygen, the third thing you're going to want to have is water, because you're going to want to have the nice, I recommend the lavatories, the showers, the sinks. It's a lot nicer than having to deal with um, polluted dirt, having to manually fill it with water and do with the polluted water. Once you get all that set up, it also greatly reduces all the germ issues you'll have with food poisoning. I really like having my sinks, my toilets, my uh, showers. So, what I'll look for is a steam geyser. If you hit Alt S, you can actually zoom out really far. Now, sometimes you get really lucky and have a steam geyser right near where your base starts. Sometimes you kind of got to go quite a ways like this one to find it. So, once I find a steam geyser, like I have right here, I will seal it off. Now, you're going to want to have the steam geyser towards the top. Like, this might be a better one up here, actually. Kind of like this. Now, there's two steam geysers per map. But, really, you just need one. After that, you're pretty much good for life for water. So, what I'll do is I will seal off the room. And you want to have at least two thick for the walls. And if you have nothing below it, for the floor. Um, if it's just one thick, once you get a nice little reservoir, it can actually break through the walls and spills so you don't want to do that so you do want to seal it off um, what I'll try to do before it actually fills up too much is you want to get a liquid pump at the bottom and you want to make sure you run the pipe and run the power you don't have to have it necessarily hooked up yet but I recommend hooking up the piping and the, and the electrical as well as the pump before you seal it off completely that way because you see this water is very hot, 72. It's even hotter when it comes out of the geyser, there's 75. It will burn them, so if they don't have any exosuits, but they probably won't yet this early in the game, um, you want to make sure that you get it done before there's a big buildup of water. Now, what I normally do, this is kind of the second one I'm messing around with, but you'll see with my first one, what I did, there's that scalding, if I can find it again, is once I seal it off, I put a pump in. Uh, there you are. And now I have a little bit of automation on this one to kind of make it a little bit easier. So I will actually pump the water down to a reservoir right near the base. Now again, this water is really, really hot. And I'm actually having an issue with it heating up part of my base. So maybe you want to have yours away from your base a little bit. Maybe you want to have... Um, some of those these plants here, the wheeze warts, so I call them wheezy warts, to try to help kind of cool things down because this will get very hot. You can even have the pipes run through a cold biome to kind of help cool it off. But this water will be hot. So after that, once I have my water kind of collected down here, I just run it to the base and I have it go to the sinks, the showers, the toilets. This is where they get water for food if they're doing the uh, microbe musher. Also for the algae terrariums. Now what I'll also do once I start to get some showers and toilets, you know, the lavatories and the sinks, is I'll make a water reservoir for the polluted water. So that dumps into here. And then I'll have a water cleaner like this guy clean the water and dump it into another tank, a third tank. This is recycled water. Now as you can see, this water has food poisoning germs in it. Because this water has food. This is raw sewage, basically. It's got germs. This machine will make it from polluted to clean water, but it won't get rid of the germs. But you can still use this water. You can use this water for toilets. You can use it for sinks. You can use it for showers. You can use it for uh, carbon skimmers. You can use it for um, stuff like that. You do not want to use it for food, so don't put a water pump in there. 
Because if they use this water to make food, that food is going to have food poisoning and it's going to make them sick and it's going to be terrible. So I do not recommend that. If you use polluted water for the algae terrarium, it will make the food poisoning germs airborne and it will float around in the air. So if you have those in your base, or like I have it in my farm here, it's going to make it all, it's kind of like slime lung, how slime lung is all airborne. It will do that for food poisoning. So you want to make sure you don't use recycled water for those two things. It might do it for the electrolyzer too. I haven't tried that yet, but I would not recommend recycled water for this either because again, it has the potential to aerate that um, food poisoning germs into your O2 system, which then is going to pump out into your base. So maybe if somebody knows, they can leave a comment if it will do that for that. Um, but I know it will for sure do it with this, with the terrarium. And this one as well, so I'm assuming it'll do it for that too, but maybe I'm wrong. Carbon skimmer doesn't matter. I haven't noticed it with that. But it will for everything else, so. I don't think the carbon skimmer makes oxygen. I think it just outputs nothing other than polluted water and heat. Whereas these will output, um, It actually eats carbon dioxide too, I didn't even notice that. This will actually create oxygen, so there you go. Now what I did for this system, I did a couple things. One for my polluted water recycling, one for my steam. Is I used some automation, which is pretty far down the research tree. See, once you get to these gates, it's kind of what you want to start doing that. And you also need the... Um, water pressure sensor and of course the automation line so what I did is I have a sensor down here that's set to activate if it's below 500 kilograms of water and I run this line all the way follow the trail here to the steam geyser setup and I have a AND gate the other requirement is this pressure down here. It has to be above 500 kilograms of pressure for it to activate the gate. So, when the water pressure is below the storage amount in the storage tank, below that set amount, this wire turns on. It activates this half of the AND gate. This has to be above the 500 kilograms for this one for it to activate. Once both of those requirements are met, then it turns on the liquid pump to pump the steam geyser water into the reservoir. If there's not enough water in this tank, it won't turn on, it won't pump. If there's too much water in the storage tank, it won't meet the requirements and it won't turn on. So, that's how I set that up. So that way, I don't gotta worry about, you know, shutting off. This won't overfill. That one won't run dry. It's all automatic. It's fine. I don't got to worry about it. It's all good to go by itself. I did kind of the same thing for this. So what I did, if you go back to automation mode, overlay, I have a hydro sensor down here. This activates if it's above 300 kilograms. So once I get 300 kilograms of wasted water, this will turn on. And that goes up to this AND gate. And that requires that half. The other half is that this has to be below 500, which will activate that end gate. If both of those requirements are met, it turns on the water cleaner right here, the sieve or however you say that. I don't read so good, so forgive me if I got that wrong. So then this will recycle the water. It drains from here, dumps it into here. If this gets too high, this shuts off. And stops recycling water so it prevents this from overflowing. If this gets too low, it shuts off because there's no point in having, you know, it run on and off, you know, every two seconds is making a lot of noise, being annoying. I like it better to be consistent. So if that's not met, this shuts off. If this isn't met, this shuts off. Again, that was, I just gotta make sure I use my water from this tank efficiently enough so I don't, you know, end up not using any and then having this constantly fill up and you know 
gets to, gets to be too much for both ends. So you want to make sure that you're using the right amount when you're um, doing your water setup with your recycled water. But it's a good way to kind of handle that so it just doesn't... Like half my stuff on my other base at the top corner there, my newer one. This is going to be a problem at some point, as you can see. I'm just dumping water just wherever. Eventually this is going to fill up and kind of start to flood my farm. It's going to break the walls if it gets too high. So having a water recycling setup is kind of a good way to help deal with that. And you can use this water for, again, like the carbon skimmers. Um, if you have the oil well right here, you can use recycled water for that. That's perfect for that. Or if you have, say, um, that's petroleum. If you have... I can't remember what it is now. The uh, metal refinery that requires water to help cool it. You might have to cool the water first because it's kind of hot when it comes out of being recycled. But you can also use it for stuff like that. So it's just a good way to kind of use your recycled water, get it out of the base, and actually put it to some type of good use. You hear it kind of makes a little doo -doo -doo noise when it kicks in. What's nice about this is it, it takes a while for the water to actually pump down from the geyser to his actually fills up a bit over the limit and then it, you know because it shuts off the water will actually clear out of the pipe and kind of go from there so but one thing you want to watch out for is this water is very hot when it comes in from the geyser so you want to plan your base accordingly so it doesn't make your base crazy hot like mine's it has been getting because I kind of didn't make my base so good so I should maybe redo some stuff here but I think that will about do it. I'll go ahead and save my game here. This is a game I've been streaming on Twitch. This particular map, so... If you want to check that out, there should be a link down below in the description to my Twitch and my Twitter. You can follow those if you want. I try to stream on Twitch four days a week. Or four days on, four days off, which is what my work schedule is, so... Lately, we've been doing a lot of oxygen, so if you're interested, you can check that out. And if you like the video, feel free to subscribe and like it if you haven't already. I'd appreciate that. If not, that's fine too. But that will about do it for us for today. So as always, I just want to say thank you all for watching. I do hope that all of you enjoyed. And I hope I get to see all of you next time.